morning. Um, today, uh, every fourth Sunday of the month marks our family worship service, and so if you ever wonder why we play, occasionally play videos that are kid friendly, it's because we're trying to uh, appeal to our kids that are in the room so they won't be bored the whole way, uh, the whole way through. Uh, and so, uh, for many of you all, you already know that here at Harvest, uh, we love families. Uh, we love kids, we love babies, and um, although kids uh, can be distracting, they are not distractions. Amen. And, uh, and so we uh, love for them to be with us, and we shut down our Harvest Nursery and Harvest Kids for that main reason, but secondarily, uh, we shut it down because we want to give our workers, our members who serve in those areas, a break. Uh, oftentimes they sacrifice so much to be back there with our kids and babies that they don't get an opportunity to sit and receive. And so we are unapologetic about that. And we believe that parents are to be the uh, first disciples of their kids' lives anyway. You are their first instructors. Uh, and so it shouldn't be a hassle for our kids to sit with us for one Sunday, sometimes two Sundays out of the month. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, you saw the video that was played uh, prior to the sermon. Uh, today, uh, we're going to continue in our series on the book of Ephesians, and we're kicking off a mini-series within this uh, book series entitled The Armor of God. And uh, so today, we're going to uh, look at Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to look at one verse. If you have a Bible, whether it's a physical copy or on your phone or tablet, I want to invite you to turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and we'll read verse 14. I'll read it in your hearing from the English Standard Version of the Bible. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. This is God's word. Let's pray together. Father, in heaven, we are grateful today that you have graced us uh, to see a brand new day. Your mercies are new every morning. Yes. And we are grateful recipients of them. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord and our King. We thank you for his unselfish obedience to death on the cross for our sins. We're grateful that he laid his life down for us. Yes, Lord. So that we may be made right with you by faith in him. Yes. Father, we pray now in the moments we will share together by your spirit, Lord, that you will open up our hearts so that we might not only hear your word, but we will receive your word and we will do what it says. We entrust this time to you, Father. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. You will cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. And Lord, we pray that you will speak to every person that is seated in this room, from the youngest of us to the oldest of us. May you help me, Father, to faithfully preach your word with clarity, with conviction, and with compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to entitle today's message, The Belt of Truth. The Belt of Truth. I must admit, I am no Marvel comic guru or fanatic. But with the releases of some blockbuster hit movies by Marvel over the past few years, I am increasingly becoming a casual fan. There are a number of Marvel characters that I like, and as you can probably imagine, Black Panther is <laughs> one of them. But I also like Tony Stark, a.k.a. Iron Man. When you check out Tony Stark's stat sheet, compared to his foes, he doesn't match up to them at all. In and of himself, he doesn't have the strength or powers to fight against them, which is why 
he invented this armored, weaponized on, suit. As Tony Stark, he doesn't stand a chance against his supernatural, superhuman enemies. But what he has, or rather, but when he has his armor on as Iron Man, he has exactly what he needs to engage them in combat. In a sense, in and of ourselves, we are a collective group of spiritual Tony Starks. Wow. We don't have what it takes to fight against the devil and his spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We have no power in and of our, our ourselves to combat them. But, thanks be to God, in Jesus, we have his strength and his armor to stand against them. Here in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 through 17, Paul figuratively employs the physical armor of a Roman soldier to point us to the spiritual armor of God we have at our disposal for the spiritual war that we are in. Six pieces are listed in this passage. Only one will claim our attention this morning. If you and I are going to successfully stand firm against Satan and his evil forces, we need to, as Paul says in verse 14, fasten or put on the belt of truth. The customary basic wardrobe of men and women, for that matter, in the first century, whether citizen or soldier, was a tunic. A tunic was a long robe that often extended down to their ankles or right at the top of their feet. Wow. But generally, for men in particular, this tunic was mid-calf to knee length, and it was loose fitting. As a part of preparing himself to go into battle, a Roman soldier would hitch up his tunic to about mid-thigh level. He would hitch it up to mid-thigh level, and he would fasten a leather belt or a girdle around it to keep it in place. This allowed him to have better freedom of movement. Okay. It would keep him from becoming entangled or hindered when engaging in battle. Paul says, if we as Christians are going to be ready to engage in this spiritual battle unhindered with spiritual agility and awareness, we need to literally gird up our loins or our waist with truth. Okay. We need to put on the belt of truth. Oftentimes, if a soldier had a longer tunic, he would literally grab the edges of his tunic, pull them up, strap them around his loins, and tuck them into his belt so that he can have the freedom of movement to engage his enemy. Wow. The soldier did not want to be encumbered whatsoever. And I don't know if you've ever been in a fight, a physical fight, that is, and I'm not glorifying physical fights, or if you've ever seen a physical fight where a person um, doesn't have on appropriate clothing right. uh, to engage in battle, to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I'll never forget seeing certain fights, whether it was on videos or YouTube videos. You know, they film everything, unfortunately, nowadays and put it on social media. But you have people that will end up in a fist fight trying to fight with sagging pants on. <laughs> and undoubtedly, the one who loses is always the one whose pants <laughs> is not affixed tightly to his body. Right, right. Paul tells us that as Christians, if we're going to be ready to engage in this battle. We, we don't need 
to have things in our lives that are going to entangle us wow. Come on, bro. or hinder us. Based on the Greek grammatical structure of this verse and the entire passage for that matter, there is a sense of urgency to Paul's words. If we're going to stand against the devil, we need to put on the belt of truth and we need to do it now. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Satan, brothers and sisters, is not going to wait around Come on, yeah. to give us time yeah, yeah. to put on this belt of truth. Right. He is going to bring the fight to us, and when he brings it to us, he, he's not going to call a timeout, or he's not going to acknowledge a timeout for us to get ourselves together. Yeah. Come on, yeah, 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 yeah. Come he, on. he is going to attack us, and he's going to take advantage, hear this, of the slackness that we have in preparing ourselves for battle. Right, right. As a matter of fact, he is going to do all he can to aid us in that slackness as well. Because he doesn't want us to be prepared. He doesn't want us to have this belt of truth on us so that we can be spiritually agile and aware when he attacks us. The battle, brothers and sisters, tends to be the fiercest at the point of truth. This is why one of the go-to weapons the devil uses to attack us is lies and deception. Come on, bro. This should come as no surprise to you and I because lying is not just something Satan does. It is something that he is. Yes, he is. Talking yeah, 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 yeah. to a group of unbelieving Jews who thought that Jesus' explanation of spiritual depravity and bondage didn't apply to them. Listen to what Jesus said about the devil in the context of this conversation. In John chapter 8, verse 44, he says this about Satan. Oh, yeah. He was a murderer from the beginning mm. and does not stand in the truth mm -hmm. because there is no truth mm -hmm. in yeah. him. Come on, yeah. God. When he speaks, he speaks out of his own character. Yes, sir. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Satan, brothers and sisters, cannot tell the truth. Come on, man. Right, right. He is a liar. Yes. And so in order for us to effectively stand against him, we need to put on the belt of truth. One self-help guru is noted as saying, go inward and discover your truth. Inward is where the answers lay. If you look within yourself, you will find what you seek. The mantra for our day is, one of them is, what is true for you is true for you. This is not what truth is. Truth is not subjective or morally relativistic. It is not your truth. It is not my truth. But rather, it's God's truth. The Christian who lives by personal opinions, worldly philosophies, and baseless superstitions mm -hmm. will find himself or herself losing ground against the devil. Yeah. Standing in God's truth is the only way we can stand against Satan's lies. Yeah, Say it again. Yeah. Standing in God's truth is the only way we can stand against Satan's lies. Let me be frank with you here. You can tell pretty quickly if a fellow Christian has not secured the belt of truth around the waist of his or her life. Break it down, bro. You can tell because he or she will be personally, continually, and significantly caught in entanglements. Like feasting on unhealthy doctrine yeah. from unhealthy preachers and teachers. You can tell. Yeah. 
when a fellow Christian has not secured the belt of God's truth around the waist of their lives because they'll have a penchant, um, appetite for unhealthy teaching. Wow. As a matter of fact, Paul will say it even in this way. Not only will they have an appetite for it, but fellow Christians who do not have the belt of God's truth securely fastened around the waist of their lives will heap to themselves teachers who will teach according to their passions. In other words, they'll, they'll gather around certain preachers and teachers. They'll, they'll YouTube, they'll podcast, they'll, they'll stream certain preachers and teachers who will only tickle their ears wow. with what they want to hear. Yeah. Come on, God. You, you can tell when a fellow Christian has not securely fastened the belt of truth around his or her life because they will not only personally, continually, significantly get caught in entanglements like feasting on unhealthy doctrine, but you can also see it because they will be, they will be engaging in ungodly behavior. Woo! You see that? There's a, there's a correlation between sound doctrine and godly living. Yeah. Yeah. That when you are and yeah. have been yeah. sitting yeah. and receiving yeah. sound doctrine, yeah. that sound doctrine yeah. will accord or lead yeah. into a life of godly. Yeah. Come yes on, God. Yes You're going will. Yes Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. You see, when we don't have God's belt of truth securely fastened around us, it doesn't mean that we won't have moments where we're ungodly. Moments where we will sin. Come on. But when it's not fastened around you securely, mm. you will regularly, continually, yes. unrepentantly Come on. Come on. engage in ungodly yes. behavior. You will, without conviction of the Holy Spirit, engage and continue to engage in God, ungodly behavior, behavior that is not befitting someone who has a relationship with God. Uh, but there's one more. Not only can you tell a Christian who doesn't have the belt of truth secured around their waist by how they will be entangled in feasting on unhealthy doctrine and engaging in ungodly behavior, but you can also tell a Christian doesn't have this belt secured around them because they'll be making unwise decisions. There's a spiritual looseness that characterizes their lives and relationships. They are unhitched from God's truth. Wow. You can tell when we don't have it fastened on because there is Hear this, little desire and effort to learn God's will and live accordingly. If, 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 if you're getting a little tight around the chest, a little uneasy in your seat, don't, 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 don't lean back and don't, don't, don't clock out on us because... If that's the case, God is lovingly trying to discipline you. This morning. And he's lovingly trying to, 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 to spur you on to begin to do things that's going to help you be victorious in the spiritual fight that you are in. Right. Um, remember I told you that the devil will aid us in our slackness? He, he tends to do this in a couple of ways. So he, he just wants to take advantage of, your, of our slackness to have the belt of truth around us. He will aid in that slackness as well. One of the ways that he tends to do that is he will tempt us to think that we don't need to regularly attend worship service. Come on, Doug. To hear the faithful preaching of God's word. He'll, he'll begin to, to tempt us to have thoughts like, You've been working all week. Mm -hmm. oh, you had a real hard
hard day at a hard week at school. And you know, just go on and sleep on in. And we all understand life can happen and there are things that happen where we do need to rest and there are times that we may miss out on the gathering of the church corporally on the Lord's Day. But he'll come back the next week and he'll throw something else at you. So you know, you don't need, man, you know they got that event going down in downtown Dallas <laughs> or out North Dallas or somewhere, somewhere in the Metroplex. And it ain't gonna really hurt you to miss out again Come on, God. on the corporate gathering of the saints. You'll be okay. Just go. And then the next week, he'll come back again. All right. <laughs> and and put something else in your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tempt you to miss out on the gathering. And next thing you know, yeah. what has become occasional has turned habitual. Wow, wow. And now you are missing out on being fed God's word through the faithful preaching of a pastor or preacher. Here's another way that he'll tempt you. He'll tempt you, um, aid in your slackness to study it and discuss the scripture by showing up to a Sunday Bible class. Wow. Or showing up to our fellowship group. Or the lounge for our middle school and high school students who are here. Because, because, because as you see, our small groups are not just about coming together and eating. At the center of our small groups is God's truth. Amen. Amen. And it's another opportunity for us to engage God's word and not just to hear it preached, but now we get to help to each other to work the word into the fabric of our lives. Yeah, Come on, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, he'll, he'll start pulling some trickery on you there, too. Yeah. I'm not talking about responsibilities and just normal things that happen in life. We get, get have to work late or there are certain things going on with our children. But we know when, when we're making excuses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know when we have the time and the opportunity, but we choose oh, yeah. to do something else. Oh, yeah, God. yeah, yeah. And, and, and hear me, I'm not condemning our times in which we may want to engage in something that is not church related or that is not small group related, but we need to be careful, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Come on, God. Because, because the devil is not playing with us. Yeah. He, he desires to get that belt unloosened and actually get us to take it off. So that we will not have the spiritual agility or awareness to fight him when he comes with his lies. Yeah. Yeah. God doesn't want Satan to have a field day with us. So he has given us the belt of truth to put on. To put on the belt of truth simply means this. That we need to embrace God's truth in our lives. That's the main point of this message. To put on the belt of truth means that we, you Christian teenager, you Christian kid, you Christian sister, you Christian brother, you need to and I need to embrace God's truth in our lives. We do so in two ways, and then we'll get out of here. You interested? <laughs> How do we embrace God's truth in our lives? First, we must live totally convinced of God's truth. We must live totally convinced of God's truth. There are two aspects related to this point. Number one, we must live totally convinced of the truth of God's word. God's word, that is the Bible, is pure and perfect. In Psalm 12, verse 6, David writes, The words of the Lord are pure words. Like silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. The scripture, brother and sister, is uncontaminated. It is in no way tainted in what it conveys. It has no errors in it. If people find errors in the Bible, it's not because they are there. It's because the people that are reading it are in error. Wow. 
It's because we it's because we're not giving the Bible an honest read in and of itself. We have agendas and presuppositions that we are bringing to the Bible to try to prove, um, uh, try to disprove it in some form or fashion. And we already are bringing something to the table that taints our perspective and our reading of the scripture. Y'all yeah. know this in our political landscape. Hmm. Whether you left, right, or somewhere in the middle. If you have an agenda, it doesn't matter what the other side says or not. You, they can say something that is accurate and true, but the way in which you are interpreting it, yeah, yeah, it yeah. no matter what they say, it's going to be wrong. Right, yeah, right. right, right. Because you're going you gonna to twist that, you're going to twist that thing, you're going to splice that thing, you're going to take little sound bites. Right, y'all see, we see this right. going on all the time. Right. Yep. The stuff that President Obama said, and I'm thinking, and it ain't about being Democrat or Republican. There are things that President George Bush said. And I'm thinking, listening to people on CNN or on Fox News, and I'm saying, how in the world did you get that from what he said or what she said? That ain't what they said. It's because you 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 wanted to hear what you wanted to hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, people yeah. do this with the Bible. They don't give the Bible an honest reading. They want to come and they want to read it through their own lenses and not through the lens of its own culture and its own historical background and context. So we need to understand that the Bible is completely trustworthy. It is here that Satan has focused the crosshairs of his lies and deception. Don't miss it. Um, Satan has been and continues to target the word of God in our lives. We see his tactic employed in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 says this. Now the serpent, we know in later revelation, uh, later written revelation that this is a reference to Satan, was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say? Come on, God. You hear? See, his first tactic is to cast a shadow of doubt in our minds concerning God's word. Mm. Right, right, right. Did God really say that you can't be sexually intimate until after you marry? <laughs> it's quiet. Yeah. <laughs> did, did God really say Come on, man. You're right. that you shouldn't lie? Did God they got to really say that that you can't be a, you shouldn't be attracted to the same gender. Come on, man. Come on, God. Did the God really say that drunkenness is wrong? Come on, man. The God really say that husbands you gotta love your wives mm. as Christ loves the church because mm. after all she don't deserve it. Mm. Come on, man. The God really say. That wise, Christian wise, you supposed to submit to your husbands and Come on, everything. man. Come on, man. I mean, because after all, he ain't the greatest leader in the world. Wow. <laughs> wow. Did God really say, single, that you need to be devoted to the Lord and you need to walk in sexual purity and you need to, to use your singleness to, to be about God's will and God's purposes? And Did he really say that? Did, he real, did God actually say are you supposed to love your enemy? Wow. Not, not that one over there. Now, he clearly didn't mean that person Come on, God. over there. Come on, God. Did God really say that you shouldn't be cursing? Did God really say that you should be honest in your business dealings? Mm. Did, God, did God really say that you need to love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? Did God really say that, children, you need to obey your parents? Did God, did God really... Say that you don't need to forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some are. Did God really? Come on now. Did God actually say? But see, this, this tactic is only a setup for him to make his next move. Uh -huh, uh -huh. His next move is not just to cast doubt. It is to completely dismantle the authority of God's word in your life and in mine. I want you to see it. I want you to see it or hear it. 
Eve responded, verse 2, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. God didn't say, lest you touch it, but she was pretty much right on. But the serpent said to the woman, here it is, You will not surely die. God clearly said in chapter 2, verse 17 to Adam, on, in God. the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Satan comes to Eve and tempts her to eat the fruit, and he said the way in which he does to deceive her is he says to her, I want to cast doubt in your mind. Did God actually say this? But then I want to come back, and I'm going to suddenly dismount of God's authority in your life or try to tempt you to not acknowledge his authority. Um, you won't really die. You see, Satan, his tactics are all designed to tempt us to disobey God's word. Come on, God. The reason the devil focuses his attacks on God's word in your life is because, hear this, of the spiritual benefits that the word of God carries for your life and for mine. Yeah. God's word matures us. God's word sustains us. God's word strengthens us. God's word corrects us. God's word trains us. God's word rebukes us. The reason why he doesn't want you, teenager, Christian teenager, Christian middle schooler, adult, why he doesn't want you to obey the word is because he doesn't want you to reap the benefits of yeah, that, that hey, word. Hey, 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 hey. Right. And he will aid in whatever he has wow. to do to cause you to get slack in wow. putting on this belt of truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't need to read no Christian books that's going to help you understand the Bible. Just, mm. just, just keep watching TV and, and be on Facebook all day. Mm. All right. Come on, man. Just be on the ground just scrolling. Yeah. All day, every day. Don't don't carve out no time for God. You got, you know, you get, you get enough of that on on Sunday if if you go. Don't spend no personal time in the Word. Don't you ain't got you ain't got to listen to the Word on your way to work. Why you, you ain't got to do all that? Come on, man. Yeah, come on now. You 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 don't have to do all that. You don't you don't take all that. Hmm. After why after all you don't want to be known as a Bible thumper. Wow. I mean, you 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 don't want to be known as somebody who actually knows the Bible. Yeah. Because you know they call those people holy rollers, holy rollies and you know, person they think they're better than anybody else. So so you know, you don't want to be you don't want to be labeled as one of those people. You don't need to memorize the Bible, you don't need to memorize scripture, you don't need to pray scripture. You, you're a young person, you're a teenager, you got time. You ain't you just just chill out, just you know, just 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 relax. All the while the devil got stuff planned around the corner for you. To trip you up while you are a teenager. While you are a middle schooler. And stuff that's going to impact your life for years to come. Mm. Hear this. The greatest benefit of God's word to us. It has great benefits. But the greatest benefit is that it bears witness to the truth of God's son. Come on, Doc. Who is Jesus. See. It bears witness to the person of Jesus. The scripture tells us in John 1 that in the beginning was the word. Speaking of Jesus. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He, speaking of Jesus, was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Jesus. Him. And without Jesus, him, was not anything made that was made. In him, that is Jesus, was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You see, the enemy doesn't want us to have the belt of truth on because he is seeking to attack in our lives who Jesus is. Come on, God. He is casting doubt all over the world as to who is the person of Jesus. Jesus, friends, is not a created human being. Come on, God. God didn't create Jesus. Preach it, brother. Jesus 
was already in existence. Right, Come on, God. Right. He's the pre-existent Christ. Did you hear John 1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is not merely human. Jesus is God himself. He is the second person of the Trinity. He is equally God in his essence, in his power, in his ability. Jesus is not a JV God. Jesus ain't no, you know, there's God the Father who is big God, and then Jesus is like a mini God. Come on, God. No, no. Right. Jesus, the Father, the, the Son, and the Spirit are all equally God. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes they are. <laughs> this is the reason why in Jesus' life and ministry, when you read about him, people would say things like, like what, 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 man, what kind of man is this? That even the winds and the waves obey him. Because the, the people knew there was only one person that could control nature, and it wasn't somebody that was merely human. He had to have been God in the flesh. This is the reason why Jesus, while on earth, while you, you didn't have to give Jesus your resume for Jesus to know who you were. If Jesus stepped into the room right now, he didn't have to, he ain't got to look on your LinkedIn. He ain't got to look on your Instagram profile. He ain't got to look on your Facebook page to know who you are. He already knows everything about you. Matter of fact, even before you knew you, he knew you. He told Philip, 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 before you even came out, I saw you under that fig tree. Wow. You see, Jesus is God because he's omniscient. Yeah. Yeah. He, he knows everything. Yeah. Come on, God. He's all powerful. He is God in the flesh. But not only does the scripture bear witness to the person of Jesus, the scriptures ultimately bear witness to the work of Jesus on our behalf. This is what theologians call penal, substitutionary atonement. I know that's big theological terminology. All that simply means is Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin, Come that on, is, bore our sin on the cross to pay the penalty of our sin. Come on, God. To take on God's just wrath against us yes, sir. so that we could be set free and reconciled back to God. This is what the scriptures bears witness to. It bears witness to the work of Jesus. Come on, and this is where Satan attacks. Because he doesn't want the world to know that, there is, that, that, that Jesus has come and has taken care of our sin debt and has made us right with God. Come on, God. But not only does the scripture bear witness of the person of Jesus, not only does the scripture bear witness to the work of Jesus, the scripture bears witness to how we are saved by Jesus. Yeah. How we are made right with God. And if y'all, please don't tune me out. I need you to lean in, especially when it comes to this point. The scripture tells us that Jesus himself said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And that nobody comes to the Father that is, nobody can have a relationship with God except they come through me. Come on, God. Many people will say, do you Christians believe that you are the only ones who know God? And if I can say this in the most humble way, not because we are prideful, Scripture says absolutely. Yes. Come on, God. Because the only people who know God personally in a relationship with God are those who have come to place their trust in Christ. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean that God hasn't made himself known in creation. It doesn't mean that God hasn't, self, hasn't disclosed himself in various ways and that people can't come to see um, the attributes of God or something of the nature of God in his creation. But that is... That is not saving knowledge. All right. Woo. Yeah. 
Come on, God. That's, that's just a knowledge that just is aware that there is someone that is greater. There's a greater being. There is a creator that is out there. Come on, man. Saving relationship comes through faith in Jesus and in Jesus alone. Come on, God. Um, hear me, because we say this. Everybody is not God's child. Thank you. Right. Come on, God. Right. Come on, God. Everybody Come is on, God's man. creation. Yes, yes, and yes, every yes, human Come on, man. has been made in the image of God, yes, the yes. Imago Dei. Imago Dei. Yes, sir. But only those who have trusted yes, Jesus yes, yes, sir. Are, children. are children of God. Yes. Come on, man. Yes. I'm not making it up. Because yes. John 1 will tell us again that the people who receive Jesus by faith are the ones who have been given the right to become the children of God. Come on, man. I will tell you, friend, you can become God's child today. Yeah. All you have to do is turn from your sin and trust in the perfect work of Christ on the cross for your sins and his resurrection from the dead, and God will become your father, and you will become his son or daughter. But as it stands right now, outside of Christ, you are his creation wow. who is currently under condemnation. Woo! But if you, will, if you will receive his loving conviction today and realize that you are a sinner and you will run to Jesus and you will run to the cross in faith, you can be saved today. Come on, man. You see, uh, God's word makes us wise unto salvation. Mm -hmm. Tells us how a person is saved by faith alone in Christ yeah. alone. Yeah. But it also grows us up in salvation. Yeah. Come on, God. Come yeah. on, God. This is why we we will unapologetically be a church that is centered on the word of God and right. the gospel of Jesus. Right. We we by God's grace, we will never become a church that sings for an hour and a half, <laughs> and you only get a sermon for 10 or 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, Come on, yeah, God. Yeah, ain't gonna happen. Yeah. If, if, right. you, if you want good heads, hot heels, clap, you know, <laughs> clapping and feet stomping, and you want you want an hour or two of music, go to a Christian concert. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Come on, God. Because, because when you gather with the church, the church is the pillar and ground of truth. We are stewards of God's truth, and at the center of the life of the church. Is Jesus and his word. Right, right. So, we, 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 will, we will unapologetically be a church in this that has kids and student ministries that don't exist merely to entertain your children. All right. Come on now. Oh, preach that, brother. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> your kids... I think I would hope so. You don't bring them to church Come on, God. for them to be simply entertained. Come on, God. If you want them to be entertained, may I recommend Disney World. Amen. <laughs> may I recommend Six Flags. Come on, God. But the church yeah. is not to be whew, to be the Six Flags of your kids. Come on, God. Yeah. Come on, God. Ah. Come on, church. God. Is designed not to entertain them. Not, we're not against having fun. We, our, the kids here know they have fun back there. Oh, we don't, you know, following Jesus ain't got to be boring. Right. You know, when they sitting on the mourners bench, got little robes on them, <laughs> sack of the ashes on their head, got little crosses on their forehead, humming and stuff. Going, right, going on. That's not how we do. It. They have tons of fun here at Harvest. But listen, our mission. Yeah, yeah. Is to hear this. It is. To help them esteem Jesus highly. Come on, God. Come we we on. want to see our children come to delight in Jesus. Jesus. Yes, we God. want to see them come to savor Jesus because there's gonna be a lot of other pleasures in the world that's gonna seek to draw your kids' yeah. heart away from Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the time for us to try to to try to help them help uh, allow Jesus to become the um the greatest pleasure of their lives. Yes. Yes. So they, they're not wooed away from him right. by other 
fleeting yeah. sinful yeah. pleasures of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Because many of y'all know, some of us have been there yeah. in our own personal lives where, where we strayed away. Right. We were fine when we were in elementary school and mama made us come to church or daddy made us come to church or big mama made us come to church, yeah. right? And we didn't like it and all those type of things. And we were bored and probably writing notes and, one, you know, popping gum and picking on the pews and all, all that kind of yeah. stuff and not paying attention. But we appreciated it later on. Yeah, yeah. But, right. but for many of us, after we got out of elementary school, mm -hmm. the devil started... He started running game on us. Come on, God. Come on, God. And, and in some cases, some of us were not saved. We were just church, un, you know, un you know, Christians, non-Christians, right? We just grew up in church. You know that it is possible. Mm -hmm. Well, you yeah. grow up in church and not be a Christian. Yeah, 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 uh -oh. yeah. You can you know about Jesus, but you don't know oh, Jesus, Jesus personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, God. But some of us, we legitimately did trust Christ. Christ did save us. But somewhere along the way, we 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 kind of Loosen the bell of truth. You're right. You're right. And it got swept up yeah. into yeah. some. Y'all come on, help yeah. help the teenagers in the room testify and let the teenagers know. Listen, listen. We made some sinful choices that we yeah. wish that yeah. we could go back and undo. But Greg, by God's grace, we're not regretting anything. He's redeemed us, and Jesus has. He's able to wash us and restore us and renew us. Yeah. But we want to tell you, high school teenager. Yeah. We want to tell you, young brother. Tell you, young sister. You need to learn how to treasure Jesus now. Make Jesus yeah. the center of your heart now. Yes. Amen. So that you won't make the same sinful mistakes that we make. Come on, and have to suffer the same sinful consequences yes. that we suffer. Yes. So we want to help your children to esteem Jesus highly. And then we want to educate them concerning Jesus. When your kids go back to our student ministry and they go back to our kids ministry, even in our nursery, we want to be feeding them God's word, helping them to come to know what God's word says about him, about them, and about human nature, and about how they can grow in relationship with God. God didn't bring our church into existence to make consumers. Our mission is not to make you a consumer. Jesus' mission for us is to make disciples. And the way we make disciples is we go, we tell people about the gospel, we baptize them, and watch this, Jesus says, and also teach them to obey all that I have commanded. Well, as I bring this message to a close, let me give you the second way that we are to embrace God's truth in our lives. The second way we embrace God's truth in our lives is that we must live truthfully in light of God's truth. For people who have been saved by the word of truth, that is the gospel of Jesus, for people who have, who, who have been enlightened by the truth, who are in the truth, we need to consequently live truthfully. What does this look like? I'm going to give you a couple of things. To put on this belt of truth, to embrace God's truth in our lives, we need to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Can I put it in the negative, the prohibition? Stop lying. Yeah. <laughs> it, that, it's right there in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. Mm -hmm. As people of the truth, who believe in the truth, which is Jesus, we need wow. to speak the truth that needs to flow from our mouths. Mm -hmm. Even when the truth hurts, mm -hmm. we need to be committed to being true people who put away falsehood, who put away lying, and speak truth to one another. This is one of the blessings of our fellowship groups that we try and we strive for. One of the things we strive for is we say we want to build, hear this, trusting and truthful yeah. relationships with one another. Yeah. Yes, you see, this is important because the, it's not only important for your life in terms of why you don't need to lie because it's, it's, it's offensive to God, but it's also important for our lives together as the church. Yeah. You see, we, we can give the devil a foothold yeah. when we lie to one another. Wow. When we don't speak truthfully to one another. When we know that somebody offended us, Oh, man. Or we were offended by something. We need to, in love, go to the person and speak truthfully to them. Come on, man. Come on. About how we 
interpreted something, how we received something, or how something came across to one another. Come on, man. Yeah. Because if we don't, what, t- what will tend to happen? You will tend to be tempted Come on, Doc. to grow bitter yep. and angry yeah. towards your brother or sister in Christ. Yeah. And you'll grow cold and distant. And on Sunday mornings, you used to come around and hug her, give her a kiss, a holy kiss on the cheek. But now, yeah, it's like you just walk past her. Yeah. She yeah. said, hey. He said, hey. And you like, hey. And it kept going. Wow. And they wondering, what's up with you? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they don't know what's going on. They don't know that you have been offended by something that maybe they unintentionally did. But you haven't yet revealed that. You haven't spoken truthfully about yeah. that. And it's causing yeah. you to become bitter towards them. Yeah, you're right. And causing a strain in a relationship. Yeah. And it done, and a strain that's going on too long. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I got I got to quit. But see that with that time we can we can we can prolong stuff. Yeah. 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 By not being truthful to one another. Come yeah. on, bro. We sitting there agonizing, can't come, come into church, got a frown on the face, looking down there. We don't even want to high five them when the preacher said give them a high five or whatever. We just stand there with our arms crossed. Look at, don't you touch me. Don't touch me. I ain't your neighbor today. Don't touch me. Right? And we all bitter and can't even enjoy one another and enjoy the worship service because we won't speak truthfully to one another. You see how the devil can get yeah. a foothold among us. Yeah. Not only that, not only do we need to speak the truth to one another, watch this, we need to confess sin. Wow. Come on, bro. Mm-mm. Come on now. We need to confess sin to God. Yeah. Psalm 50, 51 verse 6 says, God desires truth in the inward parts. God desires for us to be truthful with him about our sin. Yeah. And this is important. This is important for your life because... When we live truthfully, we keep ourselves away from the deceitfulness of sin. Wow. See, see, if, if you don't confess that sin, the devil will tempt you to begin to justify that sin. He'll tempt you to begin to be deceived by that sin and to think that that sin is okay Come on, man. in God's eyesight. Yeah. But not only do we need to confess sin to God, Scripture also says that we need to confess sins to one another so that we can pray for one another, so that we may be forgiven and healed by God. But here's another one. We need to repent of hypocrisy. Y'all, we all are hypocritical to some degree. Hypocritical basically means that we, we say one thing and we live another. And when that hypocrisy is in our lives, when we notice that we need to repent of that, we need to acknowledge that and ask God to help us turn from saying one thing and doing another. But then there is this last thing, is that we need to refuse to maliciously lie on or deceive one another. We need to, mali- to refuse to maliciously do that. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 says, Put away all malice and all deceit, and hypocrisy, and envy, and all slander. This, these things are not only true and good for your life, but again, they are also important and true for the life that we live together as a church. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the dangerous things when you are in battle, you, well, first, before I say that, one, one thing is that you cannot be in battle when you are in an army and be solely concerned about yourself. Wow. Because because you are you are to be a good soldier, you need to be looking out for your fellow comrade. Wow. And you need to be in position where you've been ordered to be in position. Because if you listen, if I'm on the north in on the north side of the castle, guard in the north gate, I'm trusting you. If you're on the south side of the castle, you're going to be there at that gate guarding the gate. Yeah. I shouldn't see you running to the north gate talking about what you're doing over here. Right. You, you, need, you need to be over there. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you right here? Right. You need to hear this because if you're not positioned right, 
If you're not on guard, if you don't have your belt of truth on, if you are not spiritually aware, it's not only going to affect you, it's going to affect all of us. Yeah. If, listen, it, it will cause our rights to be opened all right. to the attack or the invasion of the enemy. Come on, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know that happens in many churches yeah. where Christians... They, they are tempted by the devil, and sometimes they are tempted to, to move away from their ranks, to move away from their area, and they leave the rank open for the enemy to attack. Yeah. And I want to tell somebody, you need to close the ranks. Yeah. Yeah. Help us keep the ranks closed by not lying to one another. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, give him, don't give the devil a foothold so he cannot get his way into the life of our church. Yeah. Division, jealousy, envy. You need to be, and I need to be killing that sin in Christ every single day. Yeah. Because the devil is always going to be looking for a vulnerable point. <laughs> Not just in your own life, but in the life of our community. All right, man. And we need to be on guard. There's a hymn, as I close with this, says, O church, arise and put your armor on. Mm. Hear the call of Christ our captain. For now that we can say that they are strong. In the strength that God has given, with shield of faith and belt of truth, we'll stand against the devil's lies. An army bold whose battle cry is love reaching out to those in darkness. Our call to war, to love the captive soul, but to rage against the captor. And with the sword that makes the wounded Oh, we will fight with that faith and valor when faced with trials on every side. We know the outcome is secure, and Christ will have the prize for which he died, an inheritance of the nations. Fight on, brothers and sisters. Strap on that belt of truth so that we can stand together against the lies and deceptions of our common enemy. Amen. Amen.